Hi, today I'll show you how to make a 12 volts to 220 volts DC to AC inverter which can give you a power output of more than 600 watts. The circuit is built around the SG3525 passed with moderation IC. It's a very good IC for use in switch mode power supplies and DC to AC inverters. It can work both in low and high frequency cases. In this case, this is a 220 volts AC generator with an output frequency of between 50 and 60 Hz which is recommended for most applications in almost every country. The circuit will be powered from a 12 volts battery. The IC will get its power from the battery through the diode D1 and the capacitor C5 and C6 will filter the voltage supplied to the IC. The IC has 16 pins and it has two outputs. Connect the VCC pin 15 and the VC pin 13 to the IC positive supply. Crowd is pin 12. The frequency is set by the capacitor C1 and the resistors R2 and R1. The frequency is given by 1 or over C1 into 0.7 R1 plus 3 R2. And if you put this together, you should get a frequency of about 52 Hz, which is OK. To enable the outputs at pin 11 and 14, you need to pull down the shutdown pin 10 to ground via this symbol switch. This can be a symbol on off switch because otherwise it will be pulled up to 5 volts generated by the reference pin 16 and the outputs at pin 11 and 14 will be disabled. For soft start applications, I have installed this small on microfarad capacitor across the soft start pin 8 and ground as shown. You can leave the synchronous pin and the oscillator output pin 4 unconnected because they are not needed in this case. The resistor connected across pin 7 and pin 5 also affects the down time, that is the moment when both the outputs at pin 11 and 14 are low. The value of the resistor 2 can be anywhere from about 0 to 500 ohms, allowing a down time control from 100% to 0%, but use 47 ohms for a small down time of less than 10%. The capacitor C1 is a ceramic film capacitor and it's 100 nanofarads. R1 is 27 kilo ohms. The AC has an error amplifier with its inputs as 1 and 2. You'll need to pull up the non inverting input to 5 volts generated by pin 16 and pull down the inverting pin 1 to ground via resistor alternation. This will ensure that the outputs A and B will be always high because whenever the voltage supplied to the non inverting input is higher than that to the inverting input, the outputs will be enabled. The setup made up of R4, C3 and C2 is a simple compensation network, just leave it as shown. The outputs at pin 11 and 14 are made in a way such that they will be complementary of each other, that is whenever 11 is high, 14 will be low and vice versa. So you have two inverting signals at pin 11 and 14. The gate resistors R6 and R7 are 47 ohms and at least half watt. You can use any resistor from 47 to 220 ohms because this is a low frequency setup and the resistance does not matter that much. For the MOSFETs, you can use the IRF 1405, they are high current power MOSFETs and they should give you more than 600 watts with 12 volts. Assuming in the first stage the output at min 11 is high, so now you have a high pass here and the bipolar transistor Q5 will conduct, pulling down the gate of the MOSFET Q1 to ground, ensuring it's off. But now you have the gate of Q2 pulled up to VCC, ensuring it conducts. On the other side, you have a load put at pin 14, and so Q3 is off, also Q6 is off. This will ensure that the gate of the MOSFET Q4 will get a voltage from the VCC through D3 and R9 as shown, making it turn on. You have now Q2 and Q4 on. These are the diagonal MOSFETs of the H-bridge. This will allow a current to flow from the VCC through the MOSFET Q4, through the primary winding of the transformer, and through the MOSFET Q2 to ground on the negative rail as shown. This is the first half cycle. In the next stage, you have a low output at pin 11 and a high output at pin 4. Now the MOSFET Q4 will turn on because Q5 turns off because you have a current path from VCC through D2 through R8 and the gate of Q1. Because you have a high pass here, the MOSFET Q3 will also turn on, but the MOSFET Q2 will be turned off because its gate is pulled down to ground and also the MOSFET Q4 will be off because its gate will be pulled down to ground since Q2 now will conduct. Now you have the MOSFET Q1 and Q3 conducting. This will change the current flow from VCC through Q1 through the primary winding of the transformer 
through Q3 and to the negative relation. This completes the second half cycle. The voltage across the primary winding will have reversed in each direction once. This is one oscillation and the process will repeat 50 times per second. Another output voltage will depend upon the transformation ratio between the primary and the secondary windings. For a ratio of 1 is to 20, you can easily convert 12 volts to 240 volts, which is okay, and it will allow for a small voltage drop in case the output load is high. Ensure the transformation ratio is somewhere between 18 and 20 to get a voltage of 220 volts to 240 volts. The transformer in question here is an iron count transformer with laminated iron sheets. Ensure that its core area is large enough to handle 600 watts. A simple transformer you can salvage is one from an old microwave because most microwaves are written for 3700 watts, so it should work very well if you use it in the reverse manner. Or you can remove the secondary winding and make your own primary winding. Or you can just use any other transformer that you have, just ensure that its power rating is enough to power the load that you want. The reason I have used a H-bridge is because you can obviously see it will allow for a single primary winding to be used and unlike a push-pull topology, you do not need a primary winding with a center tap. And also it will ensure that you can handle more power. The capacitor C9 and the resistor R11 is a simple voltage spike arrestor. It's connected across the primary winding of the transformer. And this will ensure that when the MOSFETs are switching off, because an inductor will generally register a reverse voltage spike, this spike will be conducted through the capacitor R9 and the resistor R11 and shortened across the primary winding. Ensure that the capacitor C9 and the resistor R9 can handle at least 5 watts of power because they generally might get warm. R11 is 47 ohms and at least 5 watts. And the capacitor C9 is 100 nanofarads and written for at least 600 volts. The project PCB will look as shown. It's a very good and compact circuit board. The input from the battery comes here. This is the positive and the ground. This is the diode supplied to the IC and the filtering capacitor. This is the IC and its battery biasing components. Here are the MOSFETs Q1, Q2, Q3 and Q4 which make up the H-Bridge the gate, transistors, the snubber, network made up of R11 and C9 and here are the connections to the primary of the transformer. You can see the high current carrying tracks are thick and ensure that in case you make the bond you thicken them with a lot of solder to ensure that they can handle at least 60 amperes or more. This will give you a power output of more than 600 watts at 12 volts. If you use transistors that can handle at least 90 amperes. You can use the IRF3205 or the IRF1404 or 1405. They will work well. And in 3D, the final board will look as shown. The battery connections, the transformer connections, the MOSFET bridge, the IC and its battery biasing components and the filtering voltage supply to the IC. Ensure that the battery or the power supply input is stable and it will not drop too much when delivering more than 60 amperes. A leader cell battery should work well, and the PCB bottom side looks as shown. It's a very tiny PCB, considering how much power it can give. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have enjoyed this video. If so, make sure to give it a like, share with your friends, subscribe to my channel, turn on the notifications bell to get updates immediately when I upload new videos. Have a nice time, and I'll see you in the next video.